The second part of this video on solving for the first price seal bid in base Nash equilibrium using revenue equivalence. All right, this is going to be the function that helps us a lot. Um, so, and what does it uh, do? We use it to compute the expectation of the second order statistic. So remember that what the revenue equivalence theorem says is that the expected payment uh, conditional on being some type uh, is the same whether it's in the first price seal bid or second price seal bid. So what we're going to use is we're going to say, all right, given that I have my draw 0.8, then I'm going to ask myself, what is conditional on having that draw and on uh, conditional on winning the auction? What is the expected payment I would have made in a second price seal bid auction? And what that is, is it's the expected value of a truncated uniform distribution um, or a truncated value distribution where all of the values that we're drawing are smaller than uh, than my number, my V. And um, and so I'm going to I'm going to simulate that um, expectation of uh, of those values uh, in this function here. And then I'm going to only draw n minus one uh, simulated draws in my samples, and I'm going to take the max of those. So that's going to be the maximum of uh, we're now if we're in a world with five bidders, then it's the maximum of four uniform draws. But I want the distribution to be truncated so that nobody draws a number larger than mine. That's what it means to be conditioning on my being the winner my having the largest uh, type. And how do we do that? Well, this function takes a VI, which is where we want to evaluate it, a scalar, then it's a, si a vector of simulated valuations from the true untruncated distribution. Um, and then this tells us how many draws per iteration and uh, how many uh, and R used min is the number of, um, of, uh, of samples that we have want to have it at least Otherwise, uh, we want this function to give an error uh, if we're, we're getting too few samples. And this is the number of, of bidders that we are asking this function to compute the largest among. Um, actually, this is the it's computing the largest across simulations uh, among, uh, but truncating the distribution at VI. Computing the expected value of the maximum uh, uh, when we are drawing from a, a truncated distribution, um, and we can say where v sim untruncated are draws from the untruncated. And VI is the uh, truncation point. Great. So first, we're going to copy the draws that we get as an input, where we only select the rows where the draws are smaller than the value that's been given. So this value that we're giving as an input could be the median draw, which in the case of the uniform would be 0.5. So then we're copying the draws uh, in the rows only where that is true. Okay, and then uh, we need to further drop a few extra rows, or maybe we need to drop extra rows because eventually we want to reshape this matrix to be n tall. So the number of samples that we want, uh, the number of, of bidders that we want per auction we simulate, and are used is the uh, the number of replications we get across. So we, we may drop some of them if we get an uneven number. So uh, for instance, um, yeah, say we have uh, our input is 10, then, uh, then if we delete one of them, we can't very well reshape that to be a five by two, uh, then we would need to drop the, the last four and we only have one sample remaining. So that's just some annoying, uh, extra code we have to do here to make make sure that this np that reshape does not fail. And here we check that we're using at least the number uh, we're being asked to use, otherwise we throw an error. Okay, then we sort 
and we find the largest value among the sim uh, those simulations that remain. And remember that we've dropped all simulated values greater than the truncation point. So we sort it and then we take the largest value. So actually these two lines here are identical to just going v sim is equal to v sim dot max along x is zero. And um, well, we keep it like this, this will remind us that if we use minus two here, we would get the second largest and so on. And then now this is just a vector, it's uh, length is equal to r used the number of uh, rows that we end up having in our sample, which depends on how many we've we've deleted, of course, and we just compute the mean. And then that's our uh, estimate of the expectation of the largest value conditional on having deleted all the rows uh, where we were above the truncation point. So that's how this is computing the expected value of the maximum um, in the uh, um, from the truncated uh, distribution where we truncate at the value vi. All right. So now let's have a proof of concept. So the nice thing about the uniform is that we know how to solve that auction. So let's see that uh, things actually work here. So we're going to draw a whole bunch of uh, samples, actually a million here. Um, and then we're going to um, uh, flatten this out. And then we're going to create a grid that we want to compute the largest value over. So we take from um, our value grid is going to be from zero to one, which is the min and the max of the uniform distribution, we're just going to take 10 points, we're going to not include the last one and not include the first one. Um, so here the grid, whoops, I forgot to run this one. Uh, here, uh, the grid does not have zero and doesn't have one. Okay. And so we loop through all the values in V grid. And then we save the into this vector here, we save uh, the largest where we've used each of those V's as the truncation points. Okay, so let's plot what it looks like here. That's computing the maximum uh, conditional on draws being no greater than whatever V we evaluated at. And note that we're giving it n minus one, that's crucial. So we're telling it that, of course, I'm conditioning on my own draw being the largest. So I'm only drawing n minus one other bidders that then are I'm conditioning on their draws being smaller than mine. Let's look at what it looks like. And as you can see here, the numerical and the analytical solutions are right on top of each other. So EV here, we did not here assume that it was going to be linear or anything, we're just computing expected values of some draws. But in B star, of course, uh, that is uh, our analytical function where it's built in. Um, but here we can see they're on top of each other. That's great. So it looks like it works. So let's now uh, apply it to a function where we don't have an analytical solution, namely one with a chi square distributed errors. So that's another distribution that one might use. Um, if you uh, can't remember what it's look, it looks like here it is. So it's it's a declining one. So bidders only have non negative valuations of the good. And once we get to a valuation of about 10 or so it, it really uh, starts to taper off. So this is with two degrees of freedom. And you can play around with this if you want to make the distribution look different. Okay, so how do we do this? First, we set up a grid that was pretty easy before because we knew what the min and the max was for the uniform distribution. That's what we did up uh, here, we just had a lin, lin space over zero to one. It's not as simple here, we could have a lin space from zero to 10. But we want to be general here. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw first uh, percentiles, and then we're going to take the NP dot percentile of V and we're going to take the uh, empirical percentiles. And so V grid now uh, actually goes from 0.02. So that's almost zero up to the last largest value is 9.2. So it's almost just a linear grid, or, or a grid here from zero to uh, to 10. And if we plot them, 
the, the grids that we created, you can see it's putting more grid points here at the lower end and then fewer and fewer as we get out to the, um, the sparser part of the data set. So this is called an Eki probable grid. Okay, so now let's loop through all of the grid points where we want to evaluate our solution. We're gonna loop through V grid and call EV largest with each of those V values. So those are all of the uh, the red dots corresponding X values down here. Um, and we're gonna each time pass it the full vector of draws. Uh, and remember that those draws are now random chi-square draws with two degrees of freedom. And we're gonna ask it to simulate n minus one bidders below us uh, and find the expected value of the largest among those. And we're gonna store that as the expected payment that a bidder makes in a second price sealed bid auction, conditional on having this valuation. We're gonna insert afterwards that we know that a bidder with valuation of zero is gonna pay 0, 0.0 in expectation. Um, yeah. And we're going to insert zero in our grid. So at the index of zero, we insert 0, 0.0. And then the index of zero in the grid, we insert zero, because um, that's the lowest valuation. Okay, and then we're going to take, uh, interpolate and create a linear interpolation function, which we call B star underscore numerical. Uh, and that is an interpolated function which takes has the x values of the v grid, the valuation grid, and the y values that it has to interpolate between are the ev values from the solution. Okay, let's uh, run through all those. It's thinking because we've drawn so many draws. I encourage you to sip at your coffee. Mm, great coffee. Okay. And then let's plot it together with a much finer grid. This time I'm gonna use 10 times as many points. So 1000 points in V grid fine. So V grid here is 0, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, whereas V grid fine is, is, uh, has much smaller steps as you can see. And let's plot them together. And here you can see it. So the red dots are, are the solutions on grid. <clears throat> so those are the solutions that we've solved it in all those 100 points. Uh, and here's the optimal bit in a first price seal bit auction, or uh, in other words, it's the expected value of the second order statistic conditional on the largest value taking the uh, being V. So maybe we should actually write that in here, vert uh, V of the largest is equal to V. And I forgot to close something, didn't I? Seems I broke it here. Maybe it's just not accepting. Is that it? Yeah. It appears that it doesn't like the vertical uh, line. That's odd. And close, whoops, close the door here. Great. So it's the expected value of the second order statistic given that the first order statistic is equal to V, or the nth order statistic, sorry. Okay, so now we can um, 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 think actually, is this part doing the exact same thing we've done before? Might be. Yeah, we've already seen this before. Okay, let's delete that. No, wait, no, it's not, no, it's not. No, now we take the valuations, we evaluate our numerical solution at all of the valuations. And then we um, we we take our chi-square um, valuations and sort them and we find actually what would the, uh, so it's easy to remember to find out what is the winner gonna be paying in a second price seal bid. That's just the second highest. But finding out what the winner paid in the first price seal bid, in order to get that B matrix, we needed to do all this hard work to get our B star numerical function. And now that we have it, we can evaluate it. And here is the mirror image of the plot that we saw uh, a while ago here, which showed us the distributions of the first price seal bid and second price seal bid auction payments 
with uniform valuations. And here's the corresponding plot with chi-square valuations. So what you can see is the two vertical lines that, that are showing the overall averages by, con I'm, I mean, now it's by construction that they're identical because we've, we've used this fact to construct them. But as you can see, the again, the, the standard deviations are quite different in the two distributions and the medians are different. Um, you can see the first price seal bid doesn't have quite as low bid uh, prices paid and it doesn't have quite as high prices paid. So that part is actually similar to what we saw with uniform bids. So I hope this uh, helped understanding how to work with uh, solving auctions numerically using revenue equivalence.